Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you guys about fighting a great weapon uh, with a sword and buckler. Uh, and I'm going to include some video demonstration of me actually fighting. Um, so, what do I mean by great weapon? Okay, put this down for a second. A great weapon is basically a, a, a true two-handed weapon. Um, you know, this is basically a very large sword. Um, uh, in, in different places, they had different names. You know, uh, in some places they call them Zul Handers. Other places they call them Great Swords. Uh, but this is a weapon that, you know, where, you, where, you, where you, your hands are a little further apart. Um, and just by using that push-pull, you can generate a lot of power. And especially if you, if you come into the blow and, and put your hips into it. Okay? Dude, this is something that is going to... This is something that's gonna hit really hard, okay? Or has the ability to hit really hard. Um, now, the, the weight of this is really uh, not that much heavier than, let's say, one of these swords, okay? Um, I mean, it's, it's roughly double. This sword over here, if I put it on a scale, okay, it weighs two pounds, 12 ounces, right? So that's two pounds, 12 ounces. And if I put this on a scale, I'm gonna try a little bit more. So here we've got three pounds, 14 ounces, okay? Three pounds, 14 ounces, approaching four pounds. Um, but the, the real advantage of this weapon is, you know, you got your hands further apart, so you've got that push-pull. Um, also, you've got a little longer um, uh, surface area, right? You've got a little bit longer blade, um, which means that you're making a bigger arc. Right? By making a bigger arc, what that means is the tip is traveling a little bit faster, uh, so this has the ability to hit a lot harder, okay? Um, and basically this has a pummel on the end over here. That basically acts as a counterweight, so the, the balance point is right about there, more or less where you would expect it on the, on the sword, right? And because it's balanced, you know, you can flip it around from one side to the other. You know, you, you have the ability to, to turn it over because it's, it's pivoting on that balance point. Now this sword here, uh, on the other hand, basically I've modeled this sword and this sword over here. Like I said, this one weighs two pounds, 12 ounces. If I put this on the scale, same thing exactly, two pounds, 12 ounces. Uh, the basket over here functions as a counterweight. Okay, so basically again, that, you know, uh, this sword over here has a pummel. So if you look on this sword over here, you've got a pummel. Basically, the pummel brings the balance to about there, okay? And again, that's what allows you to turn the sword over, okay? Uh, because it's, it's rotating on that balance point here. So this sword over here is going to do the same thing. It allows me, you know, to strike the side, the side, you know, I'm, I'm able to do all those things because it's, it's rotating on that balance point. So, what, you know, in this, um, video, this fighting video that uh, you guys are going to see in a minute, um, I was specifically testing um, if I'm fighting if I'm fighting with a sword and buckler against a great weapon, right, um, and again, that could be, you know, it could be a pole axe, you know, it, you know it just, just any large two-handed weapon. Um, if I'm fighting against a great weapon, do I have the ability to block it, do I have the ability to block hard hits? Um, so now the person that I that I used the, the you know as for the demonstration purposes. Now, it, this wasn't choreographed. This was an actual fight. Uh, basically, I picked the person that had been fighting almost as long as I've been fighting, um, and the great weapon, right? The two-handed weapons are his primary form. That's what this guy primarily fights with. So he's good with it. Uh, I primarily fight with the shields, okay? Uh, the, the, the sword and buckler is more of a secondary form for me. Um, I usually fight with the larger shield. Um, so, you know, in a manner of speaking, this person was better with his great sword than I am with the sword and buckler because, again, this is not my primary form. That's my primary form. So, I'm kind of bringing that into the fight, okay? He's a little bit better than me um, in this weapon matchup, okay? So, um, 
Now, I, I told this person what I was looking for. I wanted to see if I could block hard hits from him. Uh, that's, I told him that basically if it was a real fight, you know, I want you to fight, fight it like you mean it. You know, don't pull any punches because you see me with a with a with, with a little dinner plate here for a shield. Um, you know, I said I want you to bring it to me. Okay. So, uh, and I was expecting him to throw some pretty hard shots. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the fighting video, uh, let you guys see that, and then we're going to talk about what ha what actually happened in the video. Okay. So let me go to that. So what are your thoughts? My thoughts were you were very effective uh, in shooting for the openings. Uh, A piece of this fabric. Uh, the, I, I was a, when I was able to double up with the buckle and the sword. I was able to block the shots, like I was, you know, which is what I was testing for. I wanted to see if, if I could stop your shots yep. at full power, full speed, and I was pretty satisfied with that. No, that was really good. Yeah. Like one, you definitely had a solid block on the butler. Okay, well, so. We saw that fighting video just now. Um, so let, let's talk about what, what was happening. Um, me, me going into that fight, okay, uh, my strategy was that basically I wanted to catch the first shot, to block the first shot, uh, close in and strike, okay, uh, because he had a longer weapon, 
You know, I didn't want to be at a range where, you know, where, let me get the weapon. This has more reach, so he can hit me all the way out to here, whereas I can't reach him. So I don't want to be at this distance here where he can hit me and I can't hit, hit him. I want him to be at this distance, fighting him here, uh, where I can basically uh, kind of stuff his weapon a little bit uh, and prevent him from, from, um, uh, from, you know, from being able to use this as effectively. Uh, the key is how to get there. How do you get inside his range without getting hit with this thing? Um, so, uh, basically, I want him to... You know, I wanted him to throw a shot, I wanted to block that shot and close in. Um, and I kind of suspected that that first shot was going to be a really hard one because, you know, he was at his optimal range. Um, so what I was doing basically is as he threw a shot, I was kind of doubling up my defense over here. Okay, now, usually uh, when we think of fighting sword and buckler, you know, we think of using the, struggle, the, the, the buckler more as a hand defense, right? Um, now, typically when I fight with a buckler, I hold it flat and I keep my hand behind the sword, right? I'm sorry, I keep my hand behind the buckler to protect my hand, but I'm, I'm holding it flat usually because I have that cone of defense. So as I stand in front of the camera here, like right now you can see a lot of my body. As I extend this out, you can see, you see less and less of my body uh, because of the angles involved. So usually when I fight against another buckler, I want to hold it extended and fight around it. However, when I was fighting against the great weapon, um, I was more concerned with just doubling up my defense, locking the two weapons together, the buckler and the sword, and, and basically trying to get a more powerful block uh, with the sword. I wanted to catch his, his attack somewhere between here and here. That was my, op obviously I didn't want to catch it up here because the sword's a lot weaker up here. Not weaker in terms of like the blade breaking, but weaker whereas if you push on this, it's gonna, it's gonna move it. Whereas over here, you push on this, um, you know, I have a lot more strength over here. So um, fighting with this weapon simulator, right? Which is basically the inside of this is made of basically rattan, which is hard wood. Um, and it, it, it hits pretty hard, but obviously it's not gonna hit as hard as a two-handed two weapon that you're swinging with both arms and stepping into. So again, with this, I'm trying to, you know, double up my defense. Um, in some cases, trying to actually catch the block, you know, right here, in this area right here, which would, you know, kind of brace, bracing it against this basket over here, right? Um, and against a, you know, using a real sword, you know, basically I'd be using that cross guard to kind of brace the sword, you know, and kind of hook it, hook them together and try to catch it, you know, in there, okay? Um, or if I'm holding it out, or hold it out like this. So, I, I, so basically I wanted to lock these two weapons together for that initial shot. After, after that initial shot, then obviously I wanted to come in, stop the weapon, and then attack with my free hand. Uh, given that my opponent with the great weapon only has, you know, he has a basically what we call a, um, uh, a connected uh, offense defense, right? So with, with this weapon over here, you know, basically you gotta block and attack in one motion, right? So you can't just attack somebody's legs, right, while leaving your head open, right? So he has to attack in such a way that this part of the sword uh, is defending him, while let's say this part of the sword uh, is attacking, right? Or, or same thing, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter what angle you throw it in, you know, the blade has to kind of be in front of you. You know, this part over here has to be defending you while that part over there is attacking, right? So you have a simultane simultaneous um, uh, attack, attack and defense. With the, um, you know, when I fight with the shield, with the larger shield, right? You know, I have a completely disconnected offense defense. So this can be 100% on offense, on offense while this is on defense. And basically, I can take leg shots right you know this sword is free to go anywhere it wants because I'm not depending on this uh, for my for my defense okay now when I fight with the buckler the buckler's um, a lot smaller so I can't really defend uh, depend on this for defense so I kind of have to lock the two weapons together initially and only when I feel that I have control of the opposing weapon on my blade, I can then basically transfer my opponent 
you know, my opponent's weapon to the buckler, stuff it, and then this hand becomes free to attack wherever I want to attack. Okay, so, um, so that, that's basically the, the strategy there. Uh, and what you guys saw in the video uh, is using this sword and this, I'm sorry, this, this sword and this buckler and just kind of locking them in together, uh, I was able to block hard shots. Now, my opponent, for most of this fighting, we're starting from a guard up here, right? Which allowed him, you know, move room to make those, those, those attacks. Um, now, after the fight, after that first fight, I asked him, you know, I, I, I told him, listen, I mean, you, you were throwing good shots, but I didn't think that they were the hardest shots that you could possibly throw. Like, I didn't see him, like, cocking back and really wailing into my sword, trying to beat it out of my way. I said, and I asked him, why, you know, why didn't, why didn't you cock back and just try to throw through my sword? Uh, and he told me, Again, th th that he's the the two weapon fighter. You know, it's not my primary form. But he told me that if he cocked back like this, in that extra time that it took him to come further back over here to take a more powerful blow, um, he felt that in that time that as he's coming back, you know, I would in on him really quick. Right. So I would, you know, so as his weapons coming back. To, to load up basically I'm coming in you know um you know gaining that distance that I need to gain in order to close in on him so even though he had the ability to cock back and take a more powerful shot um he didn't think it was safe to do it uh the thing with taking a more powerful shot you know as, as we as we discuss it as you take a more powerful shot it's also a more committed blow okay so if he's here and he's, you know, he's winding up and he's throwing a really powerful shot there, well, that's where the shot's going. I mean, he can, he can only change the direction so much. I know what angle that's coming to, right? It's really hard when, you, you know, like if I'm throwing from here, I can throw here and change direction. But if you're over here and you're winding up, it's really harder, it's a lot harder to change the direction. Um, as effective. So that's why he preferred um, to, you know, to fight from here um, and not throw the hardest possible shot that he could possibly throw because he didn't want to overcommit uh, to his offense, right? Knowing that, um, I, knowing because he knew what I was trying to do. He knew that I wanted to catch his weapon on the, you know, his first attack and close in. So he didn't want to overcommit to a shot that was kind of obvious where it was where it would be going regardless whether he's throwing at this line or that line you know it's a big sword you know once you initiate it with full power it's kind of hard to change direction so he preferred to take a uh, a more controlled you know um attack so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna post the uh the second video the second fight okay um you guys are gonna i'm gonna connect it to this video now and in the second fight now he's had a chance to see how I fight, right, with a buckler, um, and and again, and and um, and, and basically, um, you know, come up with some type of strategy to defeat me. Okay? Remember, this that's his primary form. Um, you know, he was able to switch gears um, a little bit faster. Um, you know, uh, compared to me, who only fights it, you know, every so often. Uh, and I've really never fought sword and buckler against a. Uh, uh, a great weapon. I've fought it many times against other bucklers. I have even fought it against shields, but I've never fought it against a great weapon. So take a look at this video. All right, same deal. Full power hit. Nothing for. I failed to 
block first. You dropped your butter completely yeah. on that one. Nicely <laughs> I got completely around your buffer on that one. Oh, okay. You put it Well, that time I just filled the block. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, I filled to. Well, no, this time I took a defensive reactive game. Okay. Which is actually a little more how I fight. Right. Because the first time I was definitely the aggressor. Right. So. Yeah, and that, I was looking for aggression to counter. Yep. And that time you weren't giving it to me, so. No. So this time. I would throw a couple of the fakes. Yeah. You were anticipating that aggression that I had last time. Right, right. So you threw the block where I would have hit. Right. And then that's when I was able to just peek around your group, your yeah, guard. Right. Well done, man. Great fight. Thank you. Like I said, for me, it helped. All right, so this fight was a completely different fight. Um, after having seen how I fight, right, um, this fight, you know, instead of trying to throw even harder to basically smash through my, my you know, smash through my sword and smash through my buckler, he was actually fighting, uh, throwing even lighter shots, okay? Uh, what he was preferring to do was basically, you know, he was able to focus more on, on, on the feint and then change directions or feint. So he was actually fighting, you know, a more um, deceptive fighting style using less powerful blows um and whereas the first fight you know it kind of came out 50 50 i think um you know you know while we were fighting the second fight uh he dominated all right because he he was using feints in my mind i think i was still kind of fighting the first fight so uh i was i was expecting Hard, you know, just as hard blows or harder blows. I was psychological. I was thinking, that, hey, you know, now that you know, after that first fight, I think maybe now he's going to come out and really try and blow through my my defense and try to swing really hard. Uh, but he did the exact opposite. Okay, he threw lighter shots using more feints, and because I was thinking he was going to throw hard shots, when I was, you know, I was expecting hard shots, so I was over committing to my defense wherever I thought that shot was coming in and because he was throwing a lighter shot um, he was able to get me to you know to block high and then bring his sword back around and hit me you know to wherever the opening was um, and because I was bracing for, for, for a more powerful uh, blow you know and I was really pushing my defense out there locking my blades together um, you know he was able to switch gears faster than me and bring the, the blade around to, you know, from a different direction. So, um, you know, so using that technique, he was able to uh, dominate the fight. So I think, uh, you know, I, I think this is really interesting the way this worked out. Um, I, I, I'm happy with the person that I chose uh, to, to, to do this experiment with because, um, you, know, um, you know, I actually learned a lot about how a great sword fighter thinks um, and, and how they're going to try to, you know, defeat an opponent, you know, they're not going to try and hit harder, they're going to try to uh, fight smarter, so I, I really enjoyed that fight, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it, um, if you're not a member of the channel, subscribe, I'll talk to you guys soon. Hey, uh, one important thing I forgot to mention in the video, uh, we are calibrated for male armor, okay, so regardless of the fact that we might have 
I don't know, plates in some area that the armor might look like 15th century. Um, we're actually calibrated for, you know, 10th, 11th century armor. Um, uh, you know, male armor with maybe like uh, one and a half, two pound Norman nasal caps. Um, so against that type of armor, um, basically we're using a percussive, we're using percussive blows, okay? Um, the, uh, the weapons which would normally be edged, uh, concentrate the force on the edge uh, to impact through the male armor, okay, and break bones or, you know, um, you know, or even if you get hit on the side of the head, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's going to rattle your head a bit, you know, if you get hit with one of these swords um, on the side of a, a two-pound two Norman nasal cap or even a, just a male coif, was, which was uh, very historic in the 10th and 11th century. So, uh, again, if you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. Talk to you guys soon.